Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks to Paul Joseph Watson for doing the news portion. And this is our interview portion. And our guest coming up today is no stranger to the InfoWars Nightly News or the Alex Jones Show. In fact, on Monday, he was on Alex's show talking about the Cyprus haircut, which he's going to have lots of stuff to say about that, I'm sure. And you can find a whole host of information at the Trends Journal. And it's trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And I turn now to writer and head uh, CEO and basically a jack of all trades, Gerald Salente. How's it going today, sir? Hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, always a pleasure to have you on here. So I told you a couple days ago, I wanted to get you on to talk about Cyprus and the fallout. Should they quit the euro? And, you know, what, what should they do in this situation? They're basically taking a 40% haircut right now. Well, let's take that word that you just used. So I'm surprised that a guy like you has been brainwashed to use a word like haircut. Why, I just got a haircut the other day. It's not a haircut, man. They stole their money. That's white shoe boy language. And that's what's going on over here. They're stealing money out of the accounts. Just kind of like what they did to me with MF Global. So it's an MF all over the world. Everybody gets effed one way or another when you deal with the banks. So here's the story. Should Cyprus stay in the Eurozone after what happened? Because if they leave, that could be really detrimental to it because we have weakness in Greece, weakness in Italy, weakness in Spain, weakness in Ireland, weakness in Portugal, and weakness in France. Eh, Germany's probably the only one really holding up to any great extent. So, you know, I'm of Italian descent. Each nationality has certain characteristics that identify it. So I would say if the Greek Cypriots are really into S&M, they should stick it out in the Eurozone because they're going to keep getting it stuck to them. How could anybody with any dignity and respect allow themselves to be taken over as they have by the bankers? And I want to make something really clear for all those people out there that say things like, hey, listen, if the economy's collapsing and things are going to hell, what good is gold and silver going to do for me? Well, check this one out. Suppose you were a Greek Cypriot, and suppose you were there right now, and you can't get much money out of the bank. But you have gold and silver. You think you could buy what you want and what you need and really get a great deal with it? Because who, at this point, living in Cyprus, wouldn't rather have gold and silver than those worthless euros, or better than that, the euros that they stole from you, or the euros that you can't get out of the bank. If there's ever, 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 ever a time for people to see the value of gold and silver before their eyes, it could not be clearer than now. And if you can't see it and you don't understand it, let's start talking about gay marriage and gun control. Maybe you'd like to hear more about that. There you go, the football issues. And, and, and I use the term haircut because they are using it, and it is brainwashing. It, it totally, you know, they, they sit there and make it seem like it's no big deal. It's just going to be, it's just a little trim off the top, a little bit off the sides. Oh, but it's actually 40% of their uh, savings accounts. And, and their checking accounts. Oh, and, and, they're, and now they're not letting the Cypriots get out more than 300 euros a day. They're going to keep them from withdrawing that. So your position on gold is exactly right. If you are holding your own gold and silver, not in a safety deposit box, but somewhere where it's actually safe from the prying hands of bankers, you know, you would have money to go out there and buy the food you need, the gas you need, because they're literally on an island there in Cyprus. But anywhere, if this happens anywhere. And it, well, let's suppose you, you have a... You know, you're selling gas or groceries, and some cat comes into you with silver and gold. You think you're going to sell it to him? And you think you're going to give him or her a great price? Because you're hungry for dough, too. And you know this is the real deal. Yeah. And so for those people out there, by the way, that listen to America's public enemy number one, Osama bin Bernanke, who says that gold isn't money, 
Oh, the same Ben Bernanke, by the way, that the Fed Minutes show didn't see the panic of aid coming even when we were in it, along with the other Fed dumbbells who didn't see it. When he says gold isn't money, tell that to the Iranians who have been frozen out of the banking system by the U.S. and NATO and, and the Arab Little League allies, and they're selling oil to China. And guess what China is giving them in return for the oil? Gold. Millions of dollars worth. Gold is money. It's only not money if you're a Benanke moron. It's only not money if you can get away with saying that and the prostitutes allow you to because, after all, they're prostitutes. It's money. And there is no greater example that exists today than the incident that's happening in Cyprus. And Cyprus is the canary in the mine. That's right. What's going on with the Cyprus banks, the money is supposed to be guaranteed by the ECB and the European Monetary Union. It's not. Oh, yes, it is under 100 a thousand euros, but they also wanted to give a little trimming to those folks as well, to the tune of 6.5%. And that 40% that you mentioned, actually, with one of the biggest of the banks also closing down in Cyprus, those people with over 100,000, they may lose everything. Oh, yeah. Everything. Just like you lost from MF Global. They just took everything, it just disappeared in thin air, never to be seen again. Yes, and if I may, I know this might not be politically correct, and it may upset some people, but this is Easter time. So just think about this. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> the only time that the Prince of Peace becomes violent is when <laughs> he chases the money changers out of the temple. Yeah. It's as old as history. I was and actually telling my that. son that story, Gerald. I was telling my son that story about Jesus Christ taking a whip and beating the bankers. I said that's the only time he ever raised a hand against anyone, exactly. unless it was to heal them, was to chase the bankers out. So continue, keep going. Now here's 1,800 years later. James Madison, President of the United States and a founding father of the nation, quote, History records that the money changers, <laughs> the money changers, have used every form of abuse, intrigue, deceit, and violent means possible to maintain their control over governments by controlling money and its issuance. And now, 300 years later, 200 years later, nothing has changed. They're still the money changers. Only the names and the outfits have changed. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking, being that, you know, you can't get the history right why we invaded Iraq over the false, you know, the lies that they told. Right or why we're in, in Afghanistan, or the humanitarian mission in Libya. You remember that time-limited, scope-limited kinetic action. You know, maybe the story of Christ isn't just right. I mean, after all, it's 2013 years ago. Maybe they messed it up a little bit. Maybe it was the money changes that killed Jesus. That's my take, because he was the one that exposed them for what they were doing to the people. When you think about it, the Prince of Peace becomes violent because of the abuses that Madison talks about 1,800 years later. So just to put it into context, the bankers are destroying the planet in every way possible. They've destroyed our country. They're destroying Europe, and they're destroying the lives of everybody that gets in their way. So just a note to see what it was, how it's been, 
and what it's become. Nothing has changed. Yeah, I totally agree. And and I actually said the same thing to my son after that. I said soon after that they put him on the cross because he was asking why he got put on the cross. And I said, well, I'll tell you what I think. Right before he died, he chased the money changers out of the temple. He whipped them. Yeah. And and you know these guys have money, so they got together and uh, and essentially lynched him. You know, this was a public lynching for somebody that they didn't like talking. They didn't like him spreading this type of gospel around against the bankers and money changers. Yeah, so here we are in a holiday, you know, that's holy for the Jewish people and the, and the Christians. You know, you better put your heads together on this one and get it straight. Yeah. You know, it's, it's atrocities. You know, they, they celebrate the Passover for what happened to them. And we celebrate, you know, they celebrate, you know, there's crucifixion of Christ. Nothing to celebrate. But, you know, in the sense that this is really serious. Again, the only time that he becomes violent is, and it's, is to, to drive the people out of the temple because the money changes are destroying the people, and it hasn't changed. Look at the poor Greek Cypriots. Look at the lines of the elderly out there trying to get what they can. Now, put this into context, if you will. We're only talking about a country of a million and, you know, you were talking about the hollow point bullets and what Homeland Security has been doing. And you guys right on top of that. Suppose 300 million people can't get their money out of the banks. Suppose there's a bank holiday mm -hmm. and you can't get your dough out. Do you want to see chaos like we've never seen before? It's going to be coming to a city and a town near you if the trends are allowed to continue the way they're going. And, and this is something that I don't think a lot of people are interested in talking about. You know, the, the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about this. They, they're trying to make it seem like Cyprus is its little island and it's self-contained and this won't spread. This isn't going to come to us. We're riding high on the stock market, Gerald. Why, why are you preaching such doom and gloom? Yep, that's you right. Know? Oh, yeah, we're riding high in the stock market. Right, the S&P still can't break its level of where it was in 2007, and they're all rejoicing about the rally in the stock market, which accounting for inflation, the market should be a 1,000 points higher than it is now. And again, just a little gold story. What was gold when the stock market hit its height in around 2007? It was like I 200 and something dollars? 700 and something, yeah. Okay. What's it worth now? Well, about 1600 yeah. Hey, isn't that a little better than the market's doing? Oh, and you remember that wonderful NASDAQ. Yeah, the dot-com boom back there in 2000. What was it at, about 5000 when it crashed? And what is it now 13 years later? Oh, gee, it's only you know, in the 3000s. Yeah. Oh, it's doing dandy. Yeah, what they do is they, they move the bar backwards, and then when you get almost to where you were 10 years later, they go, look how great we're doing. And then yeah. they move the bar back, and then they're going to do the same thing again. People don't realize there's another bubble. It's another, we got another bubble coming. Let's go back to Cyprus, and, and then you've got this small economy. How, how is this going to affect us in the United States? Is this a litmus test for, hey, the technocrats can just go in and take 40% here? Are they going to start doing it to the other countries? What do you think is going to happen? I think what you just said. And they just prove that they're going to take it from anyone. Because with the way the banking system is, we have FDIC, don't forget. What do they have, like $16 trillion worth of deposits in there? A number like that. In the tens of trillions. Maybe yeah. about $10 trillion. And how much money do they have in to back it? Try $33 billion. That's right. Call up the FDIC. They'll tell you. And then you know what they'll tell you? Yeah, but we could draw another $100 billion from it. From the, from the, FDI, from the feds. <laughs> they got no money to back it. Here's what I believe they're going to do. They, get, they did it before, and they could do it again. When they call a bank holiday, and again, this is a litmus test. They're seeing what they could get away with. They're saying that when you put your money in the bank, it's really not your money. These are private banks. You're making an investment in that bank. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah you're okay. a lender. You're, you're taking a risk. It's not what you learn in, in high school, that you need to get a savings account and, and save your money in the bank because that's the safe way to do it. That oh. was before. That was before the criminal gang of the uh, the Clinton Slick Willie and his boys deregulated the banking industry by killing the Glass Steagall Act. Right. So they, they, in those, so in those days, yes, that's what made sense because 
They had controls. You know, there was no such thing as Bank of America. They were out in California. Small bank. There was no Wells Fargo. They were out there. You didn't, they were, didn't allow, up until very recently, interstate banking. You had all banks could not, they, you couldn't do banking outside of the state limits because they tried to control it because they learned what happened during the 1930s and plus other controls. So here's what they'll do, I believe. You go back to the National Emergency Banking Act of 1933 when FDR made people bring in their gold and sell it to the feds. That's right, and if you didn't do it, it was against the law, you get 10 years in jail, and if they found you with gold, you'll penalize three times the amount of what they found. So, they made people sell it back to the Fed at $20.65 an ounce. After they got it all in, or thought they did, they repegged the price of gold, because back then, the dollar was pegged to gold. That's what the runs on the banks were, because you could take that dollar and turn it in for gold. People were turning it in for gold, and they didn't have the gold. So they called a bank holiday. After they got all the gold in, they repegged the price of gold from $20.65 an ounce to $35 an ounce. You just took a 70%, I know you'll like this word, uh -huh. haircut. Ah. Yeah. 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 So they devalued the dollar. And that's what I believe they're going to do again. It's going to be a devaluation. And that's how they're going to try to get us out of this whole debt crisis, because as every intelligent human being knows, there's absolutely no way the United States is going to pay off that $16.5 trillion in debt that we have, plus the, what is it, the hundreds of trillions of unfunded uh, uh, things that we have to pay for in pensions and benefits, et cetera. So there's no way they're going to be able to get us out of this. And again, if there is a bank holiday, there's no way the FDIC can back and control the loss of your money when they only have $33 billion in the bank to cover $10 trillion worth of deposits. Yeah, that doesn't add up even if you're into fuzzy math. Um, so, yeah, right. so how, how can how can we fix this? What's uh, I mean, we're we're at the anniversary of a crucifixion. Are we are we going to crucify bankers? Are we, we're going to let them go, obviously, because they're perfect and they know everything. But what can we do to fix this? I mean, what can the average guy out there do? Well, again, only speaking for myself. Yeah, as you well know, I've been buying gold for you know since 1978 and silver as well. Not as much, but and so only speaking for myself. I don't give financial advice. Number two is that we have to put back in place the laws that prevented this from happening before. Glass-Steagall has to be totally reinstated. Totally. It's the only way. And along with that, all of the trade agreements that were broken, that were put in place so we would have jobs here that, pay, that paid living wages. I mean, what kind of country are we when we can't make our own shirts and shoes, when we don't make our computers, it was more than just offshoring our jobs to foreign countries. They offshored our brains. Do you think the Chinese would be able to pull off what they have if the, if the, if the political criminals, the mafia, didn't sell everything that we had to them? Exactly. They sold our labor. They sold our minds. They sold our hearts and intelligence for fractions of pennies on the dollar. And, and to add to that, Paul Craig Roberts recently wrote an article about how the innovation goes with production. So our futures are gone, too. How they, they say, oh, well, we're going to innovate here and then put it into China and have them produce the goods. No, the innovation's going to China. So that's the future that they said that's we're going right. to have. And then everything else is getting replaced by robots. They said we're going to have robot journalists. We're going to have robot uh, service people now. Everything's going to be robots. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be left around being useless. Well, again, you become a service sector society. Think yeah. of the word servant. Service, servitude, yeah. servant, surf, capisce? And boy, do I respect Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. As you know, he's one of the contributors to the Trends Journal. Right. So a lot of what I also say, you know, I pick up from him as well. You know, he talks about, are they rigging gold prices? And one thing he brought up that I didn't think about, yeah, I know that they rigged the LIBOR rates. I mean, what is that, $700 trillion worth of rigging? Right. And then he made the point 
Yeah, and they're rigging the bond market right in front of our eyes. Nobody's talking about that. The Fed is rigging the bond market. They're buying $85 billion worth of bonds and, and securities each month. They're rigging the markets. And that money's so coming out of thin air. Rigged. That money comes out of thin air, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a total scam. And yet we keep believing that these people can somehow get us out of the crisis that they got us into in the first place. Yes, and that's the tragedy. And for anybody that thinks that these people that got us into the problems are going to get us out and they come from a higher order, you know, the story that I, the, my favorite story of the year was when they found King Richard III's bones under a parking lot. You know, <laughs> get over the ego trip, man. Exactly. You know, you're just dust and bones. Dust in the and, wind. Yeah. <laughs> And so stop looking up to these clowns and start rising up and finding the greatness within yourself, everyone, so that we could change this future, because yeah. it can be changed. If we keep following the sociopaths and psychopaths, well, you know that path. It's the path of ruin. Hey, let's start another war. Korea looks really great. Lost the first Korean War. Why not lose the second one? But this time... Let's uh, let's turn a lot of people into glass in the meantime. Yeah, I'm actually scared. Uh, on the Drudge Report this morning, they they're, he's targeting Austin, Texas. Oh yeah, you know, well, I mean, no Alex is there, <laughs> you know. Well, I think he's he probably heard a few things Alex said about him, Kim Kim Jong Un, and he's taken personal offense and all weapons, open fire. You know, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, this is nonsense. I mean, really, I mean, what what is North Korea? They have a couple of bombs. They'll turn to nothing. They got some bicycles. They got yeah. some bicycles. Yeah. They, yeah, they still have rickshaws, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I mean, and in the United States, I love it. They send, you know, B-2 squadrons, you know, bat-like planes over the peninsula and into the area around. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, they're going to bomb North Korea with nuclear weapons. That's great. And you know what's so great about these new nuclear weapons? All of the fallout stays exactly where you bomb them. So it won't go into Japan, it won't go into China, it won't go into South uh, Korea, it won't go into the water. But hey, who cares about the water in the air anyway? We have Fukushima. Exactly. So Fukushima one way, you Fukushima another way. Uh, yeah, I mean, you said it, Gerald. This, this is, it, it is just utter insanity, and it keeps growing on these levels that... You know, it used to be it took 10 years to get where we've gone in, in three months. Now it's just, it's, it's hyper accelerating. The insane, and I, I think they're doing it. It's like they have to keep throwing gasoline on the fire, but then all of a sudden they run out of, of uh, fuel. So what, what else is there? Well, we start throwing humans into the fire. I mean, that's, that's where it's going. It's sociopaths and psychopaths. For anybody with a half a brain, and the other half of the brain hasn't been killed by... Uh, you know, prescription psychotropic drugs. It's a mafia. That's all it is. Yeah. It's the money changers and military industrial complex mafia. Again, from Jesus Christ to James Madison about the money changers and Dwight D. Eisenhower warned us of the military industrial complex, five star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces, two term Republican president, no wars under his rule. He stopped the Korean War and he tells people the military industrial complex is taking, robbing the, 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 the genius of the scientists, the sweat of the laborers, and the future of the children. So if you don't believe him, you know, knock yourself out. You don't want to be, leave Christ or Madison. That's okay. But the money changers and the mafia, the, uh, the money changers and the military industrial complex are the mafia. All the politicians are, are the wise guys, the front men. They do, they make everything look legit, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then you have the goon squads, which are the uh, soldiers to keep everybody in order. Yeah, they're there to serve and protect the wise guys and the dons, the capo di capos. That's all it is. It's the mafia. This isn't a democracy. It's just on a larger scale than just, you know, in one city or in one, you know, area of states. This is an entire country, and it's growing throughout the world. All these, all these things are interconnected. Gerald, anything else you want to cover uh, while we've got a, a couple more minutes left with you? 
I think that's about it. But also that, again, that the message of Cyprus is one that tells a lot of tales. And the tale is, you know, heads I win, tails you lose. If you have paper and I have gold or silver. And that it should be the message for everyone. This is why you buy gold and silver. You don't buy it to speculate. You have it there because of its intrinsic value that has existed since the time of not the written word, but the drawn word on caves. So the story again of Cyprus has to be the most important along with the other part of the story. If you don't have your money, you don't own it. As you mentioned, I lost my money with MF Global. It was in a segregated account. You lose your money from FDIC or, or possibly FDIC or if you're in the Eurozone. So why would anybody in France, in Italy, in, in, in Greece or in Spain or in Ireland or Germany keep their money in the banks when they know that they broke the law that they wrote and can now confiscate your money? Yeah, and to this date... Uh, nothing's happened to Corzine. Oh, he's better than the rest of us. Yeah. You know the word. It's justice. Just us. That's right. Not them. No, nah, it's incredible. It's incredible. And you know what else is incredible? That they've put the money changes on these pedestals. That we have to bail them out every time that they make they're, bad bets. They're too big to fail, Gerald. These guys are too, you know, if they fail, then the whole system that they talk about fails. That's right. Didn't Eric Holder say that, our attorney general? Yeah. Words to those effect, or is it Eric Himmler Holder? I keep getting them mixed up. They sound so much alike. We call him Eric Gunrunning Holder. Ah, yes. Yeah. So that, that's one of his <laughs> monikers as well. Well, uh, so tell people how they can get the Trends Journal and what's coming up in the new issue. Well, the new issue is really one that everyone, I believe, is going to need to read if they want to help change the future as well as prepare for it. And the Trends Journal, by the way, we make available to everyone. We have a discount request page there. Just fill it out, simple information, because we want to help people prepare for what's going to happen. And most importantly, for people to see the opportunities that are ahead so that they don't have to go down with the ship and take the path to prosperity. And it's all there in the Trends Journal. I could say with, with every ounce of truth within myself, you will not find a publication like it in the world. It's history before it happens. If you want to see history before it happens, you want the Trends Journal. And you've been predicting, making trend predictions, doing this. I mean, you didn't just start this last year in, in your mom's basement. You've been doing this for a while. Yeah, over you 30 know. years, yeah. Exactly. And, you know, I read it. I get it. Uh, when you guys send it out, we're on your mailing list. And let me tell you, I learn a lot from it. it it's just... And, and it's great, you know, you have Paul Craig Roberts, you have other great writers on there that it's not just you. It's you're getting the cream of the crop who the mainstream media don't want to touch, essentially, because these people are, are pulling the curtain back going, look, this is what's behind the curtain. Look at it. You know, and the mainstream media doesn't want to do that. Yes. No, of course, they're the prostitutes. And by the way, you said one thing I disagree with uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts is that he said the reporters are going to be like robots. They are already. <laughs> there you go. You're right. Yeah, they get the talking points. They regurgitate them. I, we covered that story yesterday, and, and I, was, I was reading it. I'm like, well, we already have this. I mean, what, what's the difference? Except they have to, I guess they have to pay the people. They don't have to pay the robots. That's the only difference at this point. Well, well let's talk more about gay marriage and gun control. Yeah, you know, here, catch <laughs> this football. I'm throwing it at you right now. Here All it right, is. Hey. Yeah. All right. Hey, Gerald, thanks a lot. Uh, TrendsJournal.com, TrendsJournal.com, right? Yep, and Bona Pasqua. Happy Easter. All right, same to you. Bye-bye. Always illuminating the trends forecaster himself, Gerald Salente. And uh, that wraps it up for our show tonight. I'd like to thank Paul Joseph Watson for doing the news. But before we go, the new InfoWars magazine came in today. Welcome to Planet Hoax. There it is. That's a great-looking cover. Sure to attract attention out there. And we have many different ways that you can get this. But let me I want to show you a few articles here. Here it is, Welcome to Planet Hoax. Here's Alex's article, 10 Giant Media and Government Hoaxes. Included in there is the one that I, I went off on the other night. Um, Osama bin Laden was killed in 2011. Yeah, sure he was. 
Uh, we got the ammo buy hoax. I mean, and this thing's loaded with graphics. Obama's Man Behind the Curtain by Kurt Nemo. No More Hesitation. This is on the paper targets that, oh, there's the pregnant lady in her house. There's the little boy with his daddy's gun. Um, there's the young uh, mom with her daughter. There's the old lady in her house, in her kitchen. All of these are terrorists. All right, we've got to be trained for no more hesitation to shoot them. Um, the boy who stopped the murder plot with a gun, and the national media ignored the story. Now, look at this. Look at this one right here. Comrades, turn in your weapons. Here's a poster from 1918. Look at what these people are giving back. Look what they're, they're handing in. They're giving to their commissar, their local, their local officer. They're handing in their guns. They're even handing in their swords. Okay? And up here it says, comrades, turn in your weapons. All right? And you got the hammer and the sickle and the red star. Okay, and then you have the leftists out there that like to say, well, the people that want your guns, the gun grabbers, oh, Stalin never wanted the guns. Hitler never wanted the guns. He even has a quote of Goebbels in here. Um, this just shows what you can expect from Jews if they lay their hands on weapons. There it is right there, and that's from Goebbels in his own writings. This is after the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. There you go. Let's continue on here. Um, oh, oh, oh. Avert your eyes. Let's turn this. This is our pinup. <laughs> I mean, hang this up in your store. This will definitely get some. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's Madame Feinstein. Hi, are you going to take my guns today? Yes, I am. Give me all your guns, Mr. and Mrs. America. Ugh. I mean, ugh. talk about despicable and disgusting. Oh. Uh, here's uh, the scorecard, how many rights have Americans really lost? There it is. That's from Washington's blog. I mean, great stuff. And then, you know, as Gerald was talking about throughout the interview today, gold and silver, we have a great special from Midas Resources, two silver dollars at cost for $72, plus you get the American Dream film, plus the Obama deception, plus the book, Dishonest Money. So even if you have these, you can pass them out and educate some people because you know, American Dreams, a little over 30 minutes long, a lot of great information, and it kind of gives you, it's a great primer to, like, slap you over the head and say, hey, look, here's the Federal Reserve. You know, this is how it all started. Red Shield, what does that mean? Well, it's Rothschild. The Obama deception. This breaks through the left-right paradigm because Alex did so many uh, documentaries against the Bush administration, and then Obama came in, and in March of 2009, we released this, Okay. And it has everything in there and everything that Obama's basically done. We were even talking about him going into Africa back then. And now it's all coming true. We're in Africa. We're full tilt boogie. Uh, the book, Dishonest Money, you can get that all by going to uh, MidasResources.com. There's the phone number 800-686-2237. Get your gold and silver. And if anybody from Cyprus out there did use gold and silver in a transaction during this crazy time you know, that you guys are going through, send me an email. I'd like to get you on the show to talk about it. Rob D at InfoWars.com, Rob D at InfoWars.com. Uh, if you know somebody out there who's been, or if you yourself have been in, in uh, you know, a time where they were, if you're in a different country and they suddenly cut off the money supply or something and, and you're able to use gold and silver, let's share those stories. Let's, you know, I have, I have silver, I don't have gold. I'm not, I'm not heavy in the pockets like that and I didn't get in early enough when gold was, uh, ex inexpensive, but I, I was getting into silver. I've been getting into silver and silver is a great way to go, uh, especially if you don't have a lot of money, you only have, you know, maybe 50 bucks a week to put aside, get you some silver. It's a great tool to have and you never know if you're going to need it. And it's better to have it. And even if, if they tank the dollar for some reason, well, at least you have some reserves and silver that you can uh, cash in for anything like that. Uh, one more thing, if you're watching this on YouTube, Please go to prisonplanet.tv and sign up for a membership. It's $5.95 a month. We have a 15-day free trial. You've got the Alex Jones radio show. You have the nightly news. You have special reports, all the movies. We even have some films that, that we didn't produce ourselves, but we do carry at the InfoWars store. We have United We Fall, which is from Dan Dix, Oppressed for Truth, and Don't Tread on Me. It's about the Tea Party movement. So, you know, a lot of stuff there on prisonplanet.tv. It is the way we fund the lights. We fund the cameras. Um, the suit, actually, I, Jones told me to go out and buy a new jacket, so I went out and got this jacket, which I've been wearing for the last few months, along with the other stuff, 
And, uh, you know, it, we def definitely appreciate your support out there. Uh, we're trying to get the truth out. We're trying to bring you the people out there like Gerald Salente, like Paul Craig Roberts, uh, the other great thinkers that we've had, um, Mike Adams. Getting all these people in here takes time. It does take money, and we appreciate your support for joining us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Plus, you get the InfoWars Nightly News when it comes out at 7 p.m. Central every night because uh, it comes out on YouTube the next day. We have our, our YouTube guy out in uh, Oregon who does that for us. And uh, say a little hi to Dave out there. Anyway, that's it for the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Rob Dew. Thanks to Paul Watson for doing the news, and we will see you next week.